Good morning, everyone. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. Right now, you all, it's Saturday morning. Uh, we got a little bit of snow last night. It's really chilly outside. I decided I would come down here this, mo this morning and do my one of my teaching services here. So bear with me here in the building. You will be seeing this on Sunday morning, so it will be Sunday morning when you see this video, okay? The good Lord's willing and the internet don't bug out. We're going to talk about comforting one another this morning. Uh, we're going to talk about it here in the book of Corinthians, Second Corinthians. Paul is talking, Paul is teaching. Let's go to chapter 1. Let's go to verse 2 of chapter 1 in 2 Corinthians. Paul says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He's talking to the church at Corneth, we know. So, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies <coughs> and the God of all comfort. So Paul is saying that God is the God of all comfort. If you are comforted in your spirit, that comfort is going to come from God. It does not come from man. Although man can help you along the way in your journey, really the comfort that you trust in is going to come from God because man can fail, okay? Verse 4, who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. <coughs> so Paul's saying, let me help you. Let us help you. Let us give you some comfort because we have been comforted from God and we're going to share that comfort with you. That's basically what Paul is saying. Verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Paul is looking at his calling and election here. Paul is making sure that he is doing just exactly what God sent him out into the world to do. Doesn't make any difference what he's going to go through to do that. Paul is going to accomplish that's what he's saying in these scriptures, what he's supposed to be doing for God. He said, and our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation or the prize. He's saying, I know you're going to do some suffering. We all suffer for Christ's sake. We all suffer for some things in the in life it don't it, that's just the way it is why because we believe that Jesus is God we believe that he is the son of God and we know that he came and died for our sins and the sins of the world and we don't mind telling people that so we're going to suffer but he said if you don't suffer with me you're not going to reign with me so if you want to reign with Jesus Christ one day there's going to be some suffering in spiritual things that's going to happen to you. There's no question about it. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life, beaten, stoned, put in prison, insomuch that they were despaired even of life. And I know that sometimes we go through things in our life just exactly the same way, and it 
most of the time it's family oriented things that happen to us. It's generally not the world that comes against us. It's family oriented things that come against us and oppress us. Paul says, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. So Paul is looking at himself and he's saying, brother Paul, without God, you can't make it. You, you, were, you were dead in your sins, headed down the Damascus road to persecute Christians. You were dead in those sins until you met Jesus Christ. So he said, we, had in that, we, we were sentenced to death in ourselves. But, but in God, we trust because God is the one that raises us to life from the dead. And not literally from the dead, but he's going to raise you out of the sins that had you bound in this world. Verse 10, he says, Who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver in whom we trust, that he will yet deliver us. So he he delivered, Paul got delivered from such a great death that he would have would have finally ended up in if he had continued down the wrong road, which is exactly what will happen to us if we continue in our life down the wrong road. So ye also help helping together by prayer for us that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many in our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but with the grace of God, have we a conversation in the world more abundantly towards you, for we write none things unto you than that which are acknowledged, and we shall acknowledge unto the end. Paul says, As also ye have acknowledged us in part, that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. And in this confidence, I was so minded to come to you before that we might have a second benefit and to pass by you unto Macedonia and come again out of Macedonia unto you. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness or the things that I, that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh, that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay. So Paul goes on his journey, and into the in the beginning, I want you to think about something for a moment. In the beginning, did Paul have the anointing that he had in the end? Or was this something that grew with his being faithful to what he was called to do? I'll put it like this. In the beginning, when you start out in a job in your life, you don't start out in that job knowing everything. You know some things that you've been trained to do. And with that, you progress along to the end of your journey in that particular thing that you carpentry or electric, electricity or whatever it is that you do, working on cars, in the beginning, you are a child in those things. So you are working along faithfully doing that which you know how to do. So here's Paul, persecutor of Christians. God sends him into the world to preach. He does not know everything in the beginning. He makes mistakes <coughs> along the way. And everybody's going to do that. I do that. You're going to do that. But the good thing about it is that by your mistake, you learn wisdom of what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say, so that you do not 
give God in you a bad reputation because lots of people will look at people in the world who claim to be Christians and preachers of the gospel. They will see that they have one lifestyle over here after church and they have a church lifestyle. And that's not the way that we should be. We should be with God all the time, day in and day out, hour by hour, living our life to, to that uplifting of the kingdom of God. In other words, do the things that are pleasing to God so that God is pleased with you. And when God is pleased with you, then he is going to anoint you so that you can help or comfort others. That's the whole point of being a Christian. That's the whole point of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So with that, you all, I'm going to end it right there. I, I will say this. I know that some people are a little disappointed about me ending the, the live broadcasts. But like I said, I have been doing it now for over two and a half years two times a week in that in that time period. And that's a long time. I've went through the entire Bible two times. So with me, these are what you're going to see from now on. I hope that you're, that you're blessed. And we will be doing some very serious teaching here in the near future. I, that's what I'm working on. Things that will come down very seriously in our lives, letting us see who we are, how God manifests himself in us, how that we can overcome the devil and the evil ones in the world, those spirits that come against us day in and day out. That's the things that I'm working on. You know that, that you know, we're coming to the end of the world because we're seeing in the Middle East, the things that the Bible said would happen in the last days. So those things are happening, and we will be looking at those things very seriously, okay? With that, you all, God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday.